Welcome to Esther 401 Fort Ministries. This is Tracy. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Today we're in a great story about Jesus. We're in Luke chapter 8. Okay, what's been going on here? Let me give you a little bit of fast tracking here, all right? Jesus has been preaching, all right? Now, it's near the end of the day. They jump in a boat. Who's they? It's the 12 disciples that are normally hanging out with Jesus, all right? They jump in the boat. Most of them, I'd say about half of them, are normally fishermen. This is what they've done. So, rowing a boat isn't a big deal for them, okay? Okay. So Jesus goes to the back of the boat. He falls asleep because he's exhausted, right? He's had a long day. They're going across the sea. And then what happens? They're on the Sea of Galilee. A big storm starts coming up, okay? It's not just a normal storm, okay? These guys have seen storms, all right? They know storms. They can handle storms. This, Hey, we got it from here, okay? Just don't you worry. You fall asleep. Well, this storm starts really coming up. It's starting to get raging. It's getting to the point where it's coming over the boat. It's filling the boat. They're rowing. They're getting buckets. They're trying to throw the water out of the boat. They're like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? We're rowing. Come on. We got to pick up the pace here, boys. We got to do something. Okay. So this storm is starting to gain ground, all right? It's starting to get really big. There's a lot of wind. There's lightning. There's thunder. There's waves coming over the boat. I mean, so much more. It's starting to fill up the boat. They're grabbing buckets. They're grabbing whatever they can. They're trying to bail out the boat. They're trying to do things to make sure they don't die. Now these guys, remember, they were fishermen, okay? They know how to handle this stuff, but they are panicking that they are going to die. This storm is so bad. What's Jesus doing? Well, Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat. You know, I mean, he's had a hard day. Come on now. So they're getting upset. And what are they doing? They're trying to handle it in their own strength. I got this. I normally am a fisherman. We can handle it. But finally, finally, it gets to that point, all right? It gets to that point when they don't know what else to do. Okay, so now finally, they're going to wake up Jesus in the back of the boat. Why? To ask for help? No, to tell him, hey, buddy, we're all going to die here. Don't you now, care? This is where we're picking up in our verse here, okay? We're in Luke chapter 8. We're in verses 24 and 25. Listen to what's going on. The disciples went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. And then he says this, Where is your faith? Isn't that a funny question to ask the disciples at a moment like that? Where is your faith? I mean, there's this huge storm all around them, and they think they're going to drown. And he says, where is your faith? Oh, my goodness. Before we start pointing, accusing fingers at the disciples, let's take a closer look at this situation, all right? Here are things in our lives that we do that we might not realize, okay? God has given us abilities and gifts and talents, and sometimes we just go headstrong forward without consulting God, without asking for help from God, because, hey, I've been trained. I know how to do this. I can handle this situation, just like the disciples did in the boat. They were, they were so confident in their skills and their abilities, they knew they could handle this, okay? I can handle this. I'm a fisherman. I know how to deal with storms. Well, that wasn't true, was it? Because this was a storm above all storms. This was a storm that they'd never seen in their lives. And instead of doing this one thing, what should they do, should have done? The one thing they should have done at first was gone to Jesus, the rock. They had the rock, not a rock, but the rock in the boat with them. And they needed to go to him at the storm when the storm started. They should have said, Jesus, Jesus, we need your help. What would you have us to do? What can we do here? We want to rely on you. But they didn't. They wanted to rely on themselves. And see, that's what we do sometimes in life, okay? We see something come along, but, but we've been skilled or we've been given gifts in this certain area and we think we can handle it. And we don't want to go to Jesus at first because, oh, I'm not going to bother him with this little thing. But we want to go bounding forward, hitting every single roadblock that we run into, every single wall, every single huge storm that just knocks us over. And we want to keep on trying to go forward without making any progress. And then what happens? Well, finally, <laughs> when we just about trip over these little rocks here, 
we go to the big rock here, okay? We go to the big rock and we say, Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? We're in such a mess. Oh, would you help us, God? God, can you get me out of this? Instead of going to the rock first and saying, Lord, I'm starting to hit this bit of friction here, this bit of a storm. I want you to help me. I want you to guide me. And what is that? That is the abiding life. That's found in John 15, 5. He says, if you abide in me and I in you, you can do all things. And you can do it because he's with you, because he's living through you, not because you're trying to live through you and get it done. You can't do it. You're not able to do it because only through the Holy Spirit can we do these things. Okay, so let's look at the situation again. Where did the disciples fail? Well, first of all, they didn't go to God immediately. The first thing right off the bat when they realized they're up against some trouble. Secondly, there's something a little bit deeper here now, okay? Jesus had been teaching on the shore earlier, all right? But apparently the disciples didn't connect the dots. They weren't really listening to what Jesus just taught. Jesus just taught the principle on the shore, okay? But now they're being put to the test. They're having to execute it in their own lives. But they're not getting it. They're not understanding that there's a connection between the two. The connection is this. What he taught on the shore and now what they're experiencing on the ocean. They need to put the two together. And see, this is what God will do in our lives too. He'll teach us something and then he'll want us to execute it in our lives. So bring the test along. And now it's up to us to implement, to realize, oh, God just taught me this. I remember this. Now I'm going to have faith and trust and reliance on him because he's teaching reliance upon him, upon doing it through him, the abiding life. Our strength is never in what we know. It's in who we know. Who is that? That's Jesus Christ. Okay, so let me ask you this now, all right? Did the disciples fail the test? And now, some of you might be saying, yeah, sure they failed the test. They absolutely failed it. Not necessarily so. See, it's not about passing and failing. See, that was a trick question, guys. What it really is, it's what did we learn? Did we learn? Consider it like a, a, a classroom, okay? And the first part of the lesson was on the shore. It was the teaching part, all right? The second part of the lesson now was actually in the boat where it was being implemented. It's like the practical part, putting the rubber meeting the road where it comes into action, okay? And now if you can put those two together and you'll learn something from it, you passed, okay? Right. You And what's the greatest part? The greatest part is they learned this, that there is nothing that God can't handle. Nothing is impossible to God and nothing is too difficult for him. We go to him for our petitions and for our requests and I tell you what, he will. He will show you, he will tell you what it is that he wants you to do. He will not fail you. And never forget this, one word from God can calm the greatest of storms in any of our lives. This has been Tracy from Esther 414 Ministries.